<laughs> All right, folks, welcome to the barbecue. Today we're going to be cooking Cornish hens on the smoker. Uh, before I do that, I'd like to show these Wolfstaff knives I recently purchased on Amazon. These things are absolutely gorgeous, beautiful, sharp, durable, quite frankly, they're just classy looking. I'll leave a link at the end of the video for you. Uh, but the star of the show today, folks, is Cornish hens from Costco. You know I love Costco. These things are $28 for six. Think about that for a moment. Dinner for 12? Not a problem. Cut them in half. That's about $2.50 per entree after taxes. Let's go ahead and take the knife. We're going to go ahead and cut open these Cornish hens, wash them, dry them, and I'll show you the next step. Stay tuned. All right. So I washed and dried the Cornish hens inside and out. Very important to do that. I want to be really dry. Now, you're going to put a binder on these things first. Now, I got to tell you, my dad made uh, jalapeno peppers and olive oil again, and these things are a little on the spicy side. This batch is a little bit hot. Look at all the garlic in there, and this is really going to provide a lot of flavor on those Cornish hens. So what you're going to do is I stole a little bit of that, and I got in this little glass right here, and I'm going to pour that on the Cornish hens. Now, when you do this, it's really important. You want to rub that Cornish hen all around. Make sure you get all the little crevices in between the wings, the thighs, the legs. You really want to massage it in there. Just kind of pretend like you're with your partner and you're going to give them a little oil rub down. You know what I'm saying? Um, so I'm going to go ahead and show you how I do this. And let's speed up the video in a little bit and you can see that. Yeah, I'm going to slow the video down because it's really important right here. You're going to pour some of that binder. If you're using this binder, that's great. Whatever you're using, you want to pour it inside the cavity of the Cornish hen. Now, it's important that you actually not just pour it in, but you got to get your fingers in there and kind of roll the Cornish hen around. You know, your fingers are in the interior wall of the cavity, and you're basically putting that binder all on the inside. And that's going to help provide even more flavor because we're going to be putting some barbecue rub inside of there. Oh, I, I just gave it away. We got barbecue rub poultry that's coming up. Let's go ahead and take a look at that right now. All right, so the Cornish hens are all oiled up. And folks... And introducing barbecue rub for poultry. Now, I got to tell you, the barbecue rub for beef, I know I have a lot of orders. I'm very sorry. It's completely sold out. I have to order more product. Uh, but I'll get it out to you as soon as I can. Just, you know, keep sending the orders in. Uh, but what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and put the barbecue rub for poultry all over the Cornish hen. Now, you want to make sure that you get all the areas in between the wings, under the wings, under the legs, in between the thighs. You know what I'm saying? You got to get it pretty much everywhere. Now, I'm going to pour inside the cavity of the Cornish hen. And got to tell you, if you don't do this part right now, if you don't put it in the cavity, it's still going to be delicious with the barbecue rub, but it's going to be more flavor, just in much better uh, 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 texture on the inside and the outside with the barbecue rub. And now, you see, I'm taking the barbecue rub that's left over in the pan, and I'm using all of it because that's expensive. You know, the barbecue rub for poultry, it's um, it's the same price as the barbecue rub for beef. And it's, it's kind of, I know it's on the pricey side, but you folks, you've had it, you love it. Just keep ordering it. You, you, know, you can't go wrong. Let's go to the next step. All right, folks. So I've had these Cornish hens in the refrigerator uncovered, basically air chilling. And what that's going to do is that's going to tighten up the skin. It's going to dry the skin a little bit. And that's going to end with a more crispier result at the final cook. Um, now, take a look at the color. That barbecue rum has penetrated deep inside the Cornish hens. This is going to be delicious. <laughs> All right, folks. So today we're going to be cooking on the Camp Chef 24-inch Wi-Fi pellicle smoker. Now, this is an excellent smoker. I've had it for quite some time, had a lot of success on it. This thing has a 20-pound hopper, which is just fantastic when you're doing a longer cook. And it also has this Wi-Fi Bluetooth technology, which is just amazing. You know, let's say you want to go visit family and friends. <laughs> Not a problem. Just turn on your phone. You can adjust the smoke level. You can adjust the heat level. You can see what's going on inside the smoker. I'll go ahead and leave a description for you, a link at the end of the description so you can check it out. I highly recommend it. If you're just getting started in smoking, this is the one you want. 
All right, let's talk about what I do when I start to prep the smoker. I like to do what's called a cold startup. Now, what that does is I'm going to hit the feed button on the camshaft, and that's going to start feeding pellets into the smoker pot before I've even turned the, uh, the igniter on. And I'm going to let it run for about two minutes, and what that's going to do, it's going to load up those pellets so that when I do turn the smoker on, I'm, it's going to produce a lot of smoke. Let me go ahead and get this thing set up. As far as the cook time and the temperature setting, we're going to do 275 degrees. We're going to do a, a setting of smoke about 7, which I find I mostly do everything at 7. Let's go ahead and show you. All right, so we're going to load everything on the top shelf of the camshaft. Now, the bottom shelf is great, and it's nice to have that extra surface, but remember that the diffuser plate and the fire comes from the bottom of the smoker. So if you happen to use the bottom shelf, your cook times are going to be a little bit shorter, and I like to leave everything longer on there. Let me go ahead and fire this thing up and watch what I do when I see smoke. All right, so I got the lid closed, and look at the amount of smoke that's coming out of that smoker. Now, it's not going to last all the, the whole the whole cook like that, but it's going to give me a, a little bit more of an initial smoke flavor. All right, so what you're seeing right here is this is what I'm seeing on my phone for the camshaft. You can see I got it set at 275, going to go one hour. All right, well, just like that, it's been an hour. Magic of editing. And I'm going to take a open it for you real quick, but we're going to get a close-up after. But at this point, what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to go ahead and set the temperature now to 350 degrees. We're going to raise it up because we want to really crisp up that skin, and we want to finish it off. We're looking for an internal temperature of at least 165 degrees for poultry. Let's take a look. All right, so we're looking at one hour. The, the Cornish hens are looking absolutely delicious. The color's starting to change. It's really starting to come together. You can see the juices are just dripping. These things are moist and delicious. All right, this is one hour and 20 minutes, folks. We did it. These things look great. They smell great. I'm going to invite some people over. I'm going to cut them in half. going to serve all four of us with some uh, little sides. Now stay tuned. Okay, so now it's time. I know you want to enjoy the Cornish hens now, but you got to wait. You want to let them rest for about 30 minutes. But before we put them in the cooler, we're going to wrap. Oh, boy, look at those things. Are they not incredible? The Barbie Jew is just, I can't say enough about it. You got to get some more. You got to order some of that stuff. So anyways, so we're going to wrap it in butcher paper because the tin foil tends to tear at the skin. So we're going to do butcher paper first, but then we are going to use the tin foil, and that's going to lock in all that steam. Locking all that heat when they go into the Yeti cooler. We want them to rest for 30 minutes. We want them to slowly come down to room temperature. Look at that, folks. It looks like Hanukkah or Christmas for that matter, whatever you choose. Let's move on to the next step. All right, folks. Well, there's that white towel. If you remember from the last video, we'll keep that between ourselves. We're going to go ahead and put these things in the Yeti cooler. I'm wrapping it in the white towel there. Uh, because it just makes everything stay warmer. And I want these things to really come down slowly in the cooler. That The slower, the better. Going to do about 30 minutes, and then we'll cut them open and see what we got. Okay, folks. So, before I cut these things open, I want to show you this other thing I got on my Woofstop set. These are the kitchen shears. They're premium. They're stainless steel. They're just beautiful. They cut great. And, you know, when you're cutting into, like, stuff like this, like the Cornish hen, you'll get a lot of gunk on the inside. So you just open them up, they come apart, you rinse them, you wash them, they're great. Let's zoom in for you here. Now, look how they cut right through those things. Just beautiful. I'll leave a link at the end of the description for you so you can check them out. Oh, boy, look at these things, folks. These are going to be delicious, of course. <laughs> All right. Let's get the other one open here, and we'll see what that one looks like. Take a look at this, folks. And, that, and that's my poochie friend right there. He, he's sniffing around. He's like, hey, Papa, can, he, can I, what do you got over here? Can I get some of that? No, you cannot. You're going to see him. He's going to sniff around the cooler in a second. <laughs> okay, folks. Well, look at it. Does it not look amazing? The Barbie Jew has worked its magic. These things look and smell delicious. This was a very easy prep, really short cook time. You got to try this. 
<laughs> All right, folks, thanks for watching this video. We did some really amazing Cornish hens today. Just a beautiful color on those with the barbecue for poultry. And keep those orders coming. I know I will be restocking the barbecue beef soon, and the barbecue poultry is probably going to sell out just as fast. Um, thank you so much. Uh, check out those links, and uh, please subscribe, share the video. I really need your support to keep going. I really appreciate it, and enjoy yourself. This is the Barbie Juice, shining off. Enjoy your smoking.